this mug I've got here, it just holds coffee. But have you ever seen those mugs where when you pour in a hot liquid, it changes color to indicate that there's something hot inside? It's smart, adaptive, and intelligent. In the age of AI, we have grown to see adaptive intelligence everywhere. It's increasingly more important than ever that we are able to understand how we can create applications that integrate AI. Hello everyone, I'm Ian. I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And joining me today is Julian. Julian is going to be talking about and showing us how Langchain4j brings some of that intelligence to Java applications. Julian, so excited for this session. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ian, for this introduction. Like you, I do believe that Java is a great platform to build AI applications today with some great tooling that is already available, like Launching4j or Spring AI. I'm Julian Dubois. I'm working with Ian in the Java Developer Advocacy team at Microsoft. And I'm also one of the core contributors to Launching4j, where I implemented the official OpenAI Java SDK integration. That's what we're going to use in this video today. To do that, I've worked both with OpenAI team and the Launching4j team, and we're going to see how easy it is to use both tools today. We're going to do a small demo in four parts. So we're going to set everything up. We're going to configure Launching4j. We're going to run it, and we're going to test it. At the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of how Launching4j works. So you'll be ready for the next video, where we'll do agents, which is a little bit more complicated, but also more interesting. So let's get started. And when I want to do a very simple Java project, usually I go to start.spring.io. That's what we're going to do right now. So here it is. I've just selected Maven because I want to add Launching4j and I want to show you how to add some dependencies using Maven as it's the most commonly used tool for dependency management. And I've selected Java 24 because I like to have the latest version of everything. I'm not adding any dependencies uh, because we're going to do something extremely simple, so we don't need anything yet. I've created the project. I've downloaded it. Let's open it up. Here it is. I'm opening it with IntelliJ. It will work the same with any IDE like VS Code, of course. Let's run the project to see if everything is fine. Here it is. Again, it's extremely simple, and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to run a the Java application and stop because there's nothing to do. Let's add uh, something a little bit more interesting. For that, I'm going to use GitHub Copilot. Let's go to agent mode. Let's use Claude Sonnet because I find it better. And let's ask it, uh, add the spring uh, command line runner to ask a question to the user. Of course, I could have coded it myself, but it's much faster to ask uh, GitHub Copilot to code it for me. So this is going to update uh, my Spring Boot project and add some simple Java code to ask uh, some information uh, to the end user. Here it is. Let's accept this. So let's run it again, and let's see how it works. Now it's asking me a question. What is your name? So my name is Julien. And it's saying, hello, Julien. So we've got a question and an answer. We're not using AI yet, so it's very basic, very simple. Uh, if we want to do something a little bit more interesting, of course, we want to add AI to our application. So let's get started, and let's add Longchain4j. For that, I'm going to go to the main Longchain4j documentation. You can do the same here, of course. Uh, the advice here is to add the dependency that you need for your uh, application. I'm going to do something a little bit more complex. If we go down here, we're going to use the bill of materials. So that's a Maven configuration. Uh, the interesting thing here is that Longchain4j is separated in many different modules. You will probably want more than one. Well, for something as easy as today, probably you only want one, but that example is probably too simple. If you want something realistic, you will want several modules. So you want dependency management here. So all your modules have the right dependencies automatically coming from this bill of material. I'm going to add it in my pond.xml right here. And I'm going to add uh, our dependencies just above. So we've got integration in Longchain4j with many large language models. Uh, for example, GitHub models, uh, Mistral, Olama, et cetera, et cetera. I want to use OpenAI official SDK. 
So you've got also an unofficial SDK, which might work better if you use Quarkus or Spring because they're using the underlying HTTP client. Uh, but I'd rather use the official one from OpenAI because you've got the latest version of everything, which I find is better in the long term. Uh, the dependency we need to use is this one. Let's copy paste it. And as we just use the uh, bill of material, we don't need to add the version. That's why I wanted to do that earlier. It's a lot easier now to use. So Longchain4j is integrated into my project. I'm just forcing Maven to reload it to be sure that everything is fine. And now I can start to configure it and then, of course, use it. Let's go back to the configuration, to the documentation here. Uh, here is how it is supposed to be configured. So let's copy paste this and have a look at how it works. Uh, I'm going to configure it right here. So we're going to use a chat model. So that's an interface. Let me import it. The chat model comes from Longchain4j. That's an interface. So all implementations will use the same interface. Uh, that's why it's interesting to use Longchain4j, one, one of the main reasons to use it. You can change implementations very easily, as you will only rely on the interface for your coding purposes. Uh, so I've got that interface that allows me to chat with any LLM. And then I need an implementation. In this case, we're going to use the official OpenAI SDK implementation. I'm going to import it. Let's just have a look. As we can see, it's a bit more complex. It's a real implementation that connects to OpenAI and, and gets uh, the answers back and, and passes everything. So it's quite complex. And as we can see, uh, it requires three parameters there are a bit more parameters if you want to but there are three main ones uh, the first one is the url then the key and then the model that you want to use let's get those parameters and configure them for that i'm going here to ai.azure.com to my azure ai foundry instance as you can see i've got several models which are already deployed i'm going to use to i'm going to use gpt5 mini uh, there is some documentation here to help you, typically with Java, here it is. Uh, you've got different SDK, like here's the, the OpenAI SDK that we are using. That's what we are using underlying uh, Longchain4j. So what we want is, uh, 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 the first thing is the URL, so we're going to copy that. And we need only the base URL, as the name suggests here. So let me copy this and only use the base URL, which is this one. The second thing we need is a key. So the key is here. Of course, in a real application, you shouldn't hard code the key here. I'm only doing this for the demonstration. And I will rotate my key just afterwards. So it's useless. And the last thing that we want to use is the model name. So we're using GPT gpt5 mini so we've got also some uh, um, constants to use that but you can just type it it's extremely easy so with that configuration my model is able to access uh, gpt5 on azure and we're going to be able to query it and ask it some questions uh, let's do something here of course with the answer so the question what 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 is your name so we're going to say uh, Please uh, write a nice poem for a person called, and here's a name, because that's what you will typically uh, call a prompt uh, when you use AI. And we're going to send that prompt to our model. So we're going to do model dot chat. And that's the prompt that we'll send to the chat. The answer to the chat is going to be a string, which is the answer from the LLM. Let's run this again. So it's asking me my name again. Let's put something a little bit more fun. My name is Java. <laughs> and let's see if we can have a nice poem about Java from GPT-5 mini. Here it is. Uh, Java, you arrive like morning, warm and steady, blah, blah, blah. It's talking about coffee, of course, because Java also in, in English uh, means coffee. So here's how you can add easily support for AI to your applications. That's only generative AI with text. If you want to use images or audio, it's basically the same. 
it's just not the same implementation, but it's basically the same thing. If you want to use other LLMs, it's also the same uh, idea. You just change the implementation and you've got here an easy to use uh, interface to query it and get the answers. In the next video, we're going to do something a little bit more complex by doing agents. Agents will be different LLMs talking together and working together for uh, doing something more complex than just what we've seen here. So see you at the next video. Thank you. Hey, Julian, thank you so much for showing us how we can easily integrate AI into our own applications. If you also want to learn and take your first steps to integrate AI, you can go to aka.ms forward slash Java and AI for beginners to find resources. It's also linked in the description of this video. We will see you in the next episode.